Hi. Uh, my name is Timothy Trespass, and uh, I'm a targeted individual. A uh, targeted individual with Mark Allen, who's been tortured and infected with sand fleas and chiggers and other parasitic creatures that went into my mouth and uh, laid eggs under my teeth and moved them all around and then you know, ate through holes in them inside of them until they all began to break out. And uh, um, so I have all these broken infected teeth and I had to go to the dentist to get them extracted, to get dentures, and you know, they're infected and, uh, oh, excuse me. Mm. And you know, I explained to them my whole situation and everything and I'm in a lot of pain already. And so basically, they spent about an hour ripping these teeth out because they didn't want to come out. And they were all shattered and they were all, they didn't want to come out. And, you know, it feels like somebody punched me in my jaw like 20 times. My eyes hurt. Underside, inside of my nose hurts. My palate hurts. My, uh, I don't know if you can even see it. these taken out and I'm in there sitting there bleeding panicking sweating shaking and in serious pain and you know I'm showing the guy nobody will read the National Institute of Health document on pain management in methadone maintained people they just refuse no one will even look at the, the six to eight months of clean toxicologies I brought from my program thinking that you know, hey, uh, if you see that, you know, that I'm not, uh, that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and that we don't have any issues with this, maybe you don't have to worry so much. But no, it, it got so bad where I, I'm almost yelling at these people, begging them, please help me with, you know, and these doctors are so arrogant. You know, the, the student doctors, they're nice, but they're terrified of their, their superiors. Oh my God, I couldn't do anything that my, you know, well, you could advocate for me. No, gee, thanks, you fucking scared ass little. Anyway, uh, finally, after, you know, they almost had to call the police on me. They had the sergeant, uh, whatever, the military guy, the, the guard come and talk to me. And I said, you gotta help me with this, please. You know, I'm a survivor of torture. I'm in severe pain. I just had all these things taken out and they're not helping me. So finally, he, this doctor like, you know, scribbled a thing and just said, go to the pain management clinic. So I went to the Bellevue emergency room bleeding all over myself, moaning and groaning, and, and they were very kind and gave me, you know, 0.5 milligram Percocet or something. And I, I'm in so much pain right now, it's not even funny. Um, and, I'm, you know, I've taken ibuprofen and uh, <clears throat> Aleve and Motrin and Tylenol all already together like 3,000 milligrams, like three, four grams of this stuff in my stomach is, anyway, you know, when they just look you in the face and they lie. We're a school and we're not allowed to prescribe medicine. Excuse me, you're a doctor and you're doing maxillofacial surgery and you can't prescribe pain medication? No, you won't. Just tell the freaking truth, you know? It's insane what they're doing and if someone has told me and I guess they're right how are they going to get people to take euthanasia to take suicide or state assisted suicide termination whatever they want to call it as an option and she said you know when they take away all the pain meds and people start to see how painful it is to die slowly without any meds they'll be begging to be put to death. And hey, it sounds like a plan to me. This whole thing is so messed up. I've been 
I mean, look at me, man. Do I look like I'm happy and healthy and not in pain? These infections I've had from the... They didn't even give me any antibiotics. They didn't even give me any gauze to put in my mouth to stop the bleeding. That, that's how completely inconsiderate these bastards are. And now I gotta have them make my dentures. I mean, it's like I try to be so nice. I try to be so kind and so honest and so, uh, you know, asking them, please, can you help me here? These are my deficits. I have problems remembering. I have pro I'm traumatized. I have PTSD. I suffered from, you know, a survivor of torture. Can you help me? And most of the time, I don't get jack. I get laughed at, I get danced around, I get told there's nothing wrong with me. I get given papers that say, if you have the symptoms that you came in here with, come to the emergency room. It's like, you know, why don't you just put a stamp on me and say, wait for him to die? Because that's really the way it feels sometimes with these people, so heartless. You know, and the thing that really bothers me is my first reaction is, I want to hurt them. I want to hurt them the way they hurt me and then be cold and, and uncaring about it. But no, that's disgusting because then I'd be just as bad as they are. And what, what does that do for me? Nothing. But the impulse is there and I got to banish it and, you know, and leave this up to God and just, you know, I mean, I can't even pray that God will, you know, it's up to him. And I, I got to forget, forgive, and move on, and not let these people take up space in my life. I got more, much more important things to do. Petra is, is really having a hard time with this B2K and the Morgellons and the stuff that they blow around all over us, these little worm things from Morgellons that float in the air and land on you and go in your skin and wiggle or jump all over you. And, and she's, she's losing it. She's trying to clean this uncleanable, unkillable stuff, you know? We don't have sterile conditions. We couldn't get them if we tried. It's, it's, we didn't have the money to buy the plastic boxes to put our clothes and stuff in. It's like, you know, trash bags. And anyway, she freaked out today because the, the door wouldn't open because her key was bent and she thought the landlord changed the lock and she freaked out on her and grabbed her and told her, you have to help me and blah, blah, blah. And so the lady took it like an assault and went down to the police and filed a report against her. And now, you know, they're just waiting like, for the next thing to happen so they can get us the heck out of here. And I'm just begging them, you know, please have a little compassion. And, you know, but they've been through so much with us, with the yelling and the nighttime and the fighting and the cleaning and the, the pain and the throwing up and the, you know, I can see why, you know. So I'm trying to get benefits, disability, welfare, temporary assistance, housing assistance, whatever I can get. I got the state home base thing trying to find us a place. I'm trying to get, uh, you know, supportive housing for people with mental health issues. But that could take a while. And I think we're gonna have to move away before that. So, you know, I don't know, we don't have the money to do this. And this lady is just, you know, every time I walk in the room, there's a group of Spanish women and they're all talking in Spanish about us and everything we did wrong and all the ways they can get rid of us. And, uh, and you know, I, I pray to God, this lady has been so kind and so, but she's reached her end. And it's, you know, the poor Petra is just, they're just bashing her. They're bashing me too. I got this loud screaming in my head. And, you know, I try my best to just maintain what, little sanity I have left and, and advocate for myself and others and anyway I've babbled enough I, I'm really in a lot of pain and uh, I feel like an idiot so I'm gonna go home and lie down and say a prayer and hope Petra's okay take it one moment at a time thank you for watching and uh, God bless us all.